I want to talk to you about the river of life as it relates to all of this. The river of life. I need, you, you need to have an open mind because I want to talk to you about some things which you're going to need an open mind for, okay? So, um, in Revelation chapter 22 verse 1 it said, God, you know, he, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, okay? A river of water of life, clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street it went. And on either side of the river there was the tree of life. Okay, I've seen this river in heaven. But from quite a distance. But I've seen this river. It is a real river. And uh, it is spiritual in substance. But it looks like water. But it's spiritual in substance. It is very, very real. And, uh, you know, we often think of this river. That you have to cross the river, you know, when you die. Um, when we die... We, 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 before we enter fully into heaven, we have to go through the river, you know, and the river washes away all the filth and the effects and the results of sin in our lives, the bad memories, the mistakes, and all are washed away and forgotten. And, uh, you know, we sing hymns about crossing the river, shall we gather at the river? They, we, we, it's a little out of our hymns in our songs about, shall we gather at the river? Crossing the river, you know? And, uh, it's, you know, it's very real. There is a river when people die, and particularly when they die, and, and you know, that they, they, they come to the outer gates, they come to just the brink of paradise, and they have to go through this river. Because it washes away the memories. It is a river of life. It is powerful. It is healing. It is very, the very life of God flows in this river. The very love and the life of God flows in it. And uh, it fits them to be able to kind of handle heaven, where there's no impurities. And so, this is part of that. But, you know, and I want to read something about that. Uh, how many of you read the book Intramuros? Intramuros? Nobody's read that book? Intramuros? It was written about a century ago. Okay, It's gone under a number of different names, but you should get a hold of it and you should read it by uh, Rebecca Springer and uh, this lady who died and was in heaven well in heaven for I think three years according to their time you know there's a difference between earth and heaven uh, time wise uh, but I want to just read a, a little bit from that because um, she dies and, and, uh, and uh, her brother meets her and she's, she is so weak because she's been incredibly sick while on earth and he picks her up and, and carries her across after she's dead now he carries her, and um, he said, lifting, he lifted me gently to my feet. He said, "Come, I want to show you the river." When we reached the brink of the river, um, which were just a few steps further on, I found that uh, I was right at the water's edge of this river. I saw flowers blooming all the way down to the river's edge, and many coloured pebbles, which were which the entire bed of the river was lined. Uh, I want you to see these beautiful stones, he said, said my brother, stepping into the water and urging me to do the same. I drew back timidly, saying, I, might, I fear it is cold. And you've got to remember, she, when she died, she was very sick. Not at least, he said, with a reassuring smile. Reassuring smile. Uh, he said, just come in as you are. She said, I glanced down at my lovely robe, and which to my great joy I found was similar to the rest of those people around here in this place. And just as you are, with another reassuring assuming smile, he said, come. Um, thus encouraged, I stepped into the gently flowing river, and to my great su surprise, found the water in both temperature and density almost identical with the air. Deeper and deeper uh, grew the stream as we waded into it, until I felt the soft uh, water playing about my throat. As I stopped, my brother said, just a little further. And I said, it will go over my head. And uh, then, the brother said, so what? She said, I cannot breathe underwater, I will suffocate. An amused twinkle came into his eyes and said soberly, we don't do those things here. <laughs> Which is true, you don't suffocate in heaven. I realized the absurdity of my position. And uh, with a happy smile said, all right, I'll come in and plunge headlong into the water. 
which soon bubbled and rippled several feet above my head. To my surprise and delight, I find I could not only breathe, but laugh and talk and see and hear as naturally underwater as above it. I sat down in the midst of these many colored pebbles and filled my hands with them. My brother lay down upon them as he would have done on a, on a lawn and laughed and talked joyously with me. Then, you know, she goes through a whole kind of thing of this whole thing. She said, um, uh, I'll have to skip a bit. Behold, as we neared the shore, my head once more emerged from the water. Uh, the moment the air struck my face and hair, I realized that I would need, need no towel or hairbrush. My flesh and hair and even my garments were soft and dry as before as the water touched them. The material out of which my robe was fashioned was unlike anything I had ever seen on earth. It was soft and emitted light, uh, reminding me of silk crepe. crepe than anything I could recall, only much, much more beautiful. Um, I fell, it fell about me in soft, graceful folds. She said, what a marvelous water, what wonderful air, I said to my brother as we again stepped out of the river. And um, uh, then she said, I felt something. She said, I walked a few steps and turned and looked back at the river and said, Frank, what has this water done to me? I feel like I could fly, like all of my the memories of my past, the earthly bad memories have been washed away. It has washed away the last of earth, the earth life and fitted me for the new life upon which, which I have just entered.